。臨別寄語讀者，大家一齊努力。陳遠雄報導。明報港文版專指漫畫嘅告別作，再度諷刺區議會改制。一棟寫住區議會嘅建築物俾大量僭建物砸爛，僭建物上面寫有不需民主成分。隔離攞住錘仔嘅人就話：必須先屬於僭建，不需就唔算係。富罕嘅《乜議員三格漫畫》冇對白，主角乜議員同佢嘅同伴望見風雨漸大，微笑向讀者揮手告別之後，轉身搭住遮並肩離開。呢一日明報頭版亦都有關於漫畫停刊嘅報導。引述專子話：暫時冇計劃喺其他平台劃定字漫畫。被問到係咪擔心安全風險，佢只係話要先處理積壓嘅工作。又話漫畫有好多可能性，香港比較少觸及，值得花時間探索。專子臨別向讀者贈言：話自由嘅花園需要自由嘅土壤，市民日常生活嘅一切都係呢一個城市嘅土壤，大家一齊努力。連載咗四十年嘅專子漫畫。過去半年六次惹嚟政府批評，明報日前宣布星期日起停刊。民政及青年事務局局長孟美娟回應最後一期專子漫畫，重新改製符合基本法定明嘅區議會職能。呢、这個改革嘅方案啦，其實就係希望可以令到區議會回復翻去基本法嘅初心、功能定位，就好似基本法九十七條裏面所講嘅，係一個非政權性嘅區域組織。區議會從來咧，嗰兩個功能咧都係好清晰嘅，喺基本法裏面講到。所以當日咧，即係尋日啊啊曾局長喺立法會嘅會議上面咧，係再重新同埋解釋。曾經點名批評專子嘅勞工及福利局局長孫玉菡就話：基本法保障本港新聞同埋言論自由，但係政府有責任指出不實嘅陳述。有線電視記者陳遠同報導。Since these satirical cartoons, which have come under government criticism, will stop publication in Hong Kong newspaper Mingpao from tomorrow. In the cartoon's final edition today, a few rocks with words that read "No democracy element needed." Was drawn above a plaque with district council written on it. Another Zunzi cartoon published in the paper supplement saw two characters waving and walking away with an umbrella in the rain. Ming Pao announced it will stop running the cartoon two days ago without offering any explanation. Ming Pao 刊出最后一期专子漫画，专子话未有计划喺其他平台画政治漫画。临别寄语读者，大家一齐努力。陳婉彤報導，明報港文版專子漫畫嘅告別作，再度諷刺區議會改制。一棟寫住區議會嘅建築物俾大量僭建物砸爛，僭建物上面寫有不需民主成分。隔離攞住錘仔嘅人就話：必須先屬於僭建，不需就唔算係。富罕嘅乜議員三格漫畫冇對白，主角乜議員同佢嘅同伴望見風雨漸大。微笑向讀者揮手告別之後，轉身搭住遮並肩離開。呢一日明報頭版亦都有關於漫畫停刊嘅報導，引述專子話：暫時冇計劃喺其他平台劃政治漫畫。被問到係咪擔心安全風險，佢只係話要先處理積壓嘅工作。又話漫畫有好多可能性，香港比較少觸及，值得花時間探索。專子臨別向讀者贈言，話自由嘅花園需要自由嘅土壤，市民日常生活嘅一切都係呢一個城市嘅土壤，大家一齊努力。連載咗四十年嘅專子漫畫，過去半年六次惹嚟政府批評，明報日前宣布星期日起停刊。民政及青年事務局局長孟美娟回應最後一期專子漫畫，重新改製符合基本法定明嘅區議會職能。呢、这個改革嘅方案啦，其實就係希望可以咧，令到區議會回復翻去基本法嘅初心、功能定位，就好似基本法九十七條裏面所講嘅，係一個非政權性嘅區域組織。區議會從來咧，嗰兩個功能咧都係好清晰嘅，喺基本法裏面講到。所以當日咧，即係尋日啊，啊曾局長喺誒立法會嘅會議上面咧，係再重新同埋解釋。曾經點名批評專子嘅勞工及福利局局長孫玉菡就話：基本法保障本港新聞同埋言論自由，但係政府有責任指出不實嘅陳述。有線電視記者陳遠同報導。有團體喺天水圍擺街站，宣傳區議會改制，兩個街站職員被人襲擊。
，朝早大約十點鐘，喺天池村嘅街站，一個年約八十歲嘅男人涉嫌揮動手推車襲擊兩個五十二同埋七十歲嘅職員，佢哋報稱手部同埋背部受傷，送往天水圍醫院治理。警方正係追緝涉案嘅男人。擺街站嘅香港各界撐完善地區治理大聯盟，強烈譴責一切暴力同埋罔顧法紀嘅行為，促請警方嚴正執法。Bits on prevention of heat stress at work will be launched on Monday. The Secretary for Labour and Welfare said, while the notes are for guidance, he does not rule out the possibility that employers could be prosecuted if they deliberately violate the guidelines. Nimo Sanai reports. Guidance on prevention of heat stress at work will be introduced on Monday. The purpose of the guidance is to protect the well-being of employees under hot working environments and prevent them from getting heat stroke. The notes include three levels of heat stress at work warnings, amber, red and black. However, the guidance is advisory and not compulsory. Addressing concerns that the guidelines are too complicated, Secretary for Labour and Welfare Chris Sun said they cover a wide range of scenarios because conditions differ in each workplace. When you look at uh, the risk of heat stroke uh, in workplaces, it varies a lot. So it depends on, of course, it depends on weather conditions, but also uh, the very uh, the unique uh, the situation of each and every workplace and the measures in place uh, is all have a role to play. Some said there could be potential legal consequences for employers who do not comply with the guidance. Those who have uh, clearly uh, violated the guidance in a very blatant way, uh, we can pursue them uh, uh, by using the uh, employer's general duty uh, under our law. So eventually they are subject to uh, legal um, punishment. Sun also commented on progress in the government's top talent pass scheme. He says 17,000 applicants have been improved out of 27,000 applications. It was nine, TVB News. Government pandemic advisor Professor David Hoy said while the seasonal flu peaked in Hong Kong last month, the recent COVID surge has yet to do so. Speaking on a radio program, Hoy said the number of flu cases has decreased since earlier this month. But he said the COVID situation is different, urging high-risk groups to receive a booster vaccination dose. Hoy nonetheless believes the reintroduction of a mask mandate and social distancing measures are unnecessary unless new variants emerge leading to a higher mortality. An alliance of non-governmental organizations found that around 74% of child caregivers are full-time housewives from low-income families who often have to take care of children alone. The group urges the government to provide support such as subsidies. Veronica Lynn reports. <laughs> Ms. Chan is a single mother. She's a full-time caregiver of a six-year-old autistic daughter. The two live in a subdivided flat in Tai Kok Choi and are kept afloat by the comprehensive social security assistance. She said that after her daughter turned six, the family's financial situation deteriorated sharply, as a lot of money was spent on the child's physical and speech therapy in order to prevent muscle degeneration and regression of speech. For low-income families, child-rearing is tough. Community organization Care for Carers found in a survey of over 700 child caregivers that around 74% of respondents belong to low-income families, earning less than $10,000 per month. 96% of the respondents were women, most of whom were housewives and the sole carer of their children. Some, just like Ms. Chan, are single parents and have to shoulder the responsibility of raising a child alone. At first, challenges is uh, their uh, financial difficulties is very big because uh, they don't have enough because they are uh, grassroots families, so they don't have enough uh, family income, and they they are. Uh, they need to spend a lot of uh, money on their children. For example, they need to uh, uh, spend money on the training if their children have SEN. The group urges the government to introduce subsidies for child caregivers, especially high-risk groups such as single parents, kids with special needs, and those who have to care for multiple children and or the elderly. The second difficulty is the stress. They are very stressful on taking care of their children because they always, uh, some of them, uh, taking their children by themselves only because they don't have they probably they are single they are from single families so they don't have others uh, they don't have spouses.
house to help them to take care of the families. Lam added that most carers struggle with mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. Apart from subsidies, the group also hopes the government will set up a 24-hour hotline to offer emotional support for these caregivers. Kwan Halin, TVB News. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is in Italy and has held talks with Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni ahead of meeting Pope Francis at the Vatican. Meanwhile, Russia acknowledged Friday that its forces have fallen back north of the battlefield city of Bakhmut after a new offensive by Ukraine forces. Tracy Furness with more. Ukrainian military released footage on Friday showing an offensive unit fighting and capturing territory near the besieged city of Bakhmut. The body cam footage shows soldiers dismounting an armored personnel vehicle straight into gunfire. The city's governor, Pavlo Kirilenko, said the Ukrainian army has had success in the area of Bakhmut. The Ukrainian Ministry of Defense said that their forces have confirmed a two-kilometer advance in the area. This, as drone footage of the devastated city of Marinka in the Donetsk region, was posted by the head of the Ukrainian presidential administration, Andrei Yermak, on his Telegram channel on Friday. He writes, Marinka, a town that was destroyed by the Russians, each such crime has become a historical stain for Russia. And today, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has arrived in Rome, Italy, amid tight security. He arrived at a military airfield at Rome's Ciampino Airport. Italian Foreign Minister Antonio Tajani was on hand to greet him. Zelensky will hold talks with President Sergio Mattarella and Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni before visiting the Vatican to see Pope Francis. Meanwhile, the war in Ukraine has become a hot topic ahead of the annual Eurovision Song Contest, which will be held in Liverpool in England this weekend. Ukraine won the contest last year, but is now fighting Russia's invasion, so cannot host the show this year. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky had a speech prepared, but the European Broadcasting Union that runs Eurovision refused to allow it, said that letting Zelensky participate would breach the non-political nature of the event. Last year's winners of the Eurovision Song Contest, Ukraine's Kalish Orchestra, defended their president's bid to speak via video link during the show. We think President Zelensky is just trying to use all the platforms to talk about Ukraine. And actually, we think he wanted to thank European people, said recording artist Timothy Muzichuk. The BBC has urged the organisers to reverse their decision and let Zelensky speak. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says it would be fitting for the Ukrainian president to make an address as the values he is fighting are not political but fundamental. Tracy Furness, TVB News. The US Treasury Secretary and the British Chancellor of the Exchequer have held talks on the sidelines of the G7 finance ministers meeting in Niigata, Japan. Janet Yellen and Jeremy Hunt said there was clear evidence that G7 had limited Russia's ability to ramp up its Ukraine actions. Well, you're absolutely right to start with uh, the abhorrent invasion of Ukraine, uh, where the economic partnership between the UK and the US, uh, European and other countries has had a very significant impact in denting Russia's ability to fund its war operations. Hunt and Yellen also discussed the need to have a better relationship with the global south to secure more support from them. The G7 Leader Summit takes place in Hiroshima next week. The European Union foreign ministers have held a one-day meeting in Sweden with Ukraine and China at the top of the agenda. The... 政府專家顧問許樹昌話：新型肺炎個案仍然上升緊，仲未到頂。被問到係咪有需要收緊社交距離措施，佢就話：除非病毒出現新品種，重症多、死亡率高，先至需要調整策略。而家唔應該走回頭路。黎善彤報導。新冠流感夹击，公立医院内科病房近日都爆满，急诊室每日平均有六千人求诊，五岁或以下小童入院率最高。政府专家顾问许树昌话：，流感高峰期月底已经见顶，感染率已经跌到百分之九点八。不过，新冠疫情仍然有上升趋势。目前流行嘅變種病毒 XBB 更加對疫苗嘅防感染功效大打折扣。
有線新聞代言失衡。政府專家顧問許樹昌話：新型肺炎確診個案仲上升緊，未到頂。被問到有冇需要收緊社交距離措施，佢話：除非病毒出現新品種、重症多同埋死亡率高，先至需要調整策略。認為而家唔應該走回頭路。黎先同報導。新冠流感夹击，公立医院内科病房近日都爆满，急症室每日平均有六千人求诊，五岁或以下小童入院率最高。政府专家顾问许树昌话：，流感高峰期月底已经见顶，感染率已经跌到百分之九点八。不过，新冠疫情仍然有上升趋势，目前流行嘅变种病毒 XBB 更加对疫苗嘅防感染功效大打折扣。嗱，而家嗰個防重症個屏障咧，就仲存在嘅，因為你打嗰陣你感染過咧，你有個 T 細胞記憶，咁誒仍然可以防到重症。如果你再感染，但係你防誒防感染嗰個能力咧就低。正我都講過，你遇到啲 XBB， 佢嗰個表面嗰個病毒表面嗰個刺突蛋白變化得太大咧，啲第一代第一代疫苗、第二代疫苗咧，對佢嗰個配對都唔係話好理想。佢話：世衛解除新冠緊急狀態，代表病毒喺世界各地風土化，認為本港冇必要再收緊社交距離措施。就係、是、如果出現咗一啲再新啲嘅品種，重症多、死亡率高，去到嗰個地步，你先至會調整嗰個策略。而家嚟講都係誒傳播性高，但係佢個嚴重程度同埋死亡風險係唔高，所以係唔應該走回頭。许树昌呼吁工人组别，包括长者、免疫系统失调人士、孕妇同医护人员，接种疫苗或者感染满六个月，应该接种加强剂。有线电视记者黎善同报道。防中暑指引下个星期一开始实施。劳工及福利局局长孙玉菡话：，虽然冇立法强制雇主遵从，但唔代表冇法律后果。如果发现雇主刻意唔跟从，会循职安健条例检控雇主。新嘅預防工作時中暑指引，將會按暑熱指數發出暑熱警告，分為三級，建議唔同工種安排相應嘅唞暑時間，甚至停工。但係指引冇法律效力。勞工及福利局局長孫玉霞話：一下子立例可能引起更多問題。主要都要顧及咧，而家嘅實質嘅工作嘅場所咧，係林林種種嘅，係嘛？但係有啲係室外室內啦，就佢情況都唔同。指引嘅好處咧，就會彈性多一啲、啊、如果你話突然間話哦，原立要立法啦，咁就變咗嗰、那個那個大家個關注度就更加大啦、啊、所以我覺得最喺香港嘅狀況咧，呢一刻咧個好處就係、是、我哋覺得重點咧，先係令到個指引更加清晰啲。冇立例強制，但係孫玉霞話呢一類指引，絕大多數僱主都會跟足，政府亦都會參考防中暑指引，追究中暑工傷個案，而檢控依據係《職安健條例》。當然呢個唔係一個。唔係一個法定嘅指引，但唔代表佢最終冇一個法律嘅後果嘅。點解我咁講咧？我哋會做巡查啦。如果你再三發現某啲僱主咧係刻意地唔跟嘅，但係嗰個環境係對工人咧會造成一個嚴重嘅中暑風險咧，我哋唔排除如果係嚴重嘅狀況下面咧，我會告佢。點解點告佢咧？就係、是、喺我哋嘅職安健條例下面有一僱主嘅一般責任嘅條款，呢邊未有咁高嘅中暑風險。勞工處都講得好清晰，點樣可以防止中暑嘅指引？你知而不做，啊，刻意地去做嘅話咧，或者係有意地唔做嘅話咧，咁情況嚴重，我哋係會可以喺法例下面就用一般僱主責任去追究佢。對於建造界質疑指引劃分工種、休息安排複雜，孫玉霞話：指引唔係一成不變，實施一段時間之後可以再調整。有線電視記者潘耀升報道。烏克蘭總統澤連斯基到訪意大利，會見總統馬塔雷拉同埋總理梅洛尼。兩人重申，意大利會一直支援烏克蘭。澤連斯基守候將會轉到去梵蒂岡，同教中方濟各見面。陳曉容報導。澤連斯基到訪羅馬，馬塔雷拉喺總統府舉行歡迎儀式。今次係自俄烏戰事爆發以嚟。泽连斯基第一次到访意大利，马塔雷拉话：真正嘅和平必须符合公义同国际法，而唔系投降，重申意大利完全企喺乌克兰一方。泽连斯基再次感谢意大利，话乌克兰同意大利拥有共同价值观，形容胜利代表和平，而和平必须喺乌克兰领土实现。两人会面大约半个钟。
，泽连斯基其后转到总理府，同梅诺尼共进工作五年。梅诺尼話：意大利會同主要盟友合作，喺各方面繼續向烏克蘭提供援助。重申只有俄羅斯停止敵對行動，烏克蘭先至可以實現公義同和平。澤連斯基就話：和平為烏克蘭帶嚟正義。其他軍援方面，德國宣布向烏克蘭提供新一輪二十七億歐元軍事援助，包括二十架雕鼠式步兵戰車、三十架炮一坦克。二百架偵察無人機同額外四套防空系統等，預料未來幾個星期會交付俾烏克蘭。今次係戰事爆發以嚟德國最大規模嘅軍事援助。有線電視記者陳曉容報導。俄羅斯接連有多架軍機喺鄰近烏克蘭地區墜毀。網上流傳片段，一架相信係米八直升機喺同烏克蘭接壤嘅布良斯克地區上空墜毀。塔斯社報導，初步知道星期六墜毀嘅直升機引擎着火，兩人死亡。一架蘇三十四戰機同日亦都喺區內墜毀，正係調查原因。俄軍星期五亦都有一架米八直升機喺克里米亞墜毀，烏克蘭未有回應。休息一陣，翻嚟會報導。一個內地漁民喺大亞灣浸親。同伴揸快艇去到西部求救，涉嫌非法入境被捕。泰国听日大选，候选人趁进入冷静期之前，最后拉票。香港服常点睇写字楼市道同数据中心中午前景呢？请嚟大德银行香港董事总经理萧立辉同大家分析下。财智相传，星期日早上十一点七十八开资讯台。